Hey BioKids, this is Underwood here coming at you with another webcast. Today we're going to be talking about cell types and we're going to go ahead and show you all the different types of cells that you're going to be studying in our biology class. You are going to be asked to take notes on this video in the Cornell Notes style. There's a template underneath this video that will help you set up your page. Basically, you're going to write the purple questions on the left side of your notes. On the right side of your notes, you're going to go ahead and write the yellow answers. So, first question. What are the two types of cells and what organisms represent them? Well, in this class, our cells are going to be broken up into two large groups. We have the prokaryotes, which include the bacteria and archaea, and we have the eukaryotes, that basically encompass everything else, the plants, the animals, the fungus, and the single cell organisms, protists. So what's the big difference between a prokaryotic and a eukaryotic cell? When we talk about prokaryotes, prokaryotes are very small much smaller than the eukaryotic cells. They have no organelles. And we're going to talk about what organelles are a little bit later in the unit. And they have no cell nucleus. So prokaryotes would be all the bacteria, the E. coli, the staphylococcus, all those things that we talk about in class. Now when we look at eukaryotes, eukaryotes encompass everything else. We've got the single-celled organisms, we have plants, we have animals, you, you are a eukaryote. And the difference is, is that eukaryotes are much larger in size. They also have many organelles. And because they have many organelles, we say that they're highly complex. And they do, they do have a nucleus, and that nucleus encloses the organism's DNA. So sharks and flowers, rotifers and little cute monkeys, those things are all eukaryotes. Now when it comes to eukaryotes, there are three groups of eukaryotes that we are going to study in our biology class. Those are animal cells, plant cells, and fungus cells. So what are some special characteristics of plant cells? Well, plant cells are autotrophs. That means that they make their own food. And they make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Plant cells also have a cell wall. And that cell wall is made of cellulose. And that's what gives plants their rigid structure. Plants also have no cytoskeleton. A cytoskeleton is a network of proteins inside the cell that gives it structure. But the plant cells don't have a cytoskeleton. Plant cells also have chloroplasts, and chloroplasts are little organelles that carry out photosynthesis. They also have mitochondria, because even though plants carry out photosynthesis, they also have to carry out cellular respiration to have the energy that they need to survive. And lastly, Plant cells normally have this large central vacuole, and it's used to store sometimes starches, sometimes water, and sometimes other nutrients that help the plant carry out its life. Now, what are some special characters of, characteristics of animal cells? Well, animal cells uh, are found in organisms that are 
heterotrophs. Now, heterotrophs mean that they have to go and they have to consume other organic material in order to make the energy that they need. Like you, you have to go out and you have to eat other things in order to obtain the molecules that are required to make energy. Animal cells have no cell wall. Instead, they have the cytoskeleton. And if you remember from the last slide, a cytoskeleton is a network of proteins that give the cell structure. Animal cells don't carry out photosynthesis. So they only have mitochondria. And mitochondria are where cellular respiration occurs. And lastly, animal cells have no central vacuole. Now what are some special characteristics of fungal cells? Well, fungus, although you may look and see that mushrooms, which are a fungus, grow out of the ground like plants do, fungus are actually also heterotrophs. They don't take part in photosynthesis. They have to consume other organic material in order to obtain the molecules that they need to survive. Now, fungal cells have a cell wall. But the cell wall is not made of cellulose, like plant cells. Instead, it's made of a molecule called chitin. Chitin is a special carbohydrate that creates a network, and the network can create a cell wall around the fungal cell. And as I said before, fungus don't take part in photosynthesis. Instead, they take part in cellular respiration. And so they need mitochondria. Lastly, fungal cells have numerous smaller vacuoles instead of that one large central vacuole that you find in plant cells. So that's our presentation on cell types. Please go ahead and watch this video as many times as you need to make sure that you have complete and clear Cornell notes. You'll be taking a follow-up quiz on this video next. This is Underwood signing off. I really hope this was helpful for you. If you have any more questions, please feel free to ask me or any of the other biology teachers on campus, and we'll be happy to help you. See you guys later.